for array cables. So array cable given 5 meter. So I am PSTC from the data sheet of the PV module. So raw for copper wire. Percentage voltage drop. So we assume that 2% in the array cable. So 0 0.02. V main MP 24.025 volt. So this is the value of the number of PV module in series and parallel. So 2 by 9. So to calculate this uh, A array cable minimum. So the size of array cable by using this equation. So you get 0 0.70611 square millimeter. So from this value, we refer to the standard size of the DC cable. So the minimum one is 2.5 square millimeter. So near to 0 0.7 is 2.5 square millimeter. So the actual size of the string cable is 4 square millimeter. Okay, because it's already 2.89, you cannot choose 2.5. Min, uh, square millimeter. That's why you choose 4 millimeter and the array cable is 2.5 square millimeter. So the smallest one. So you compare to this one. However, it is more economical to use only one size. In example, 4 square millimeter for both cable. So no need to buy two sizes of the cable. So we only use one size for both cable, array and string. So AC cable size Step, step number 6, determine the actual power loss in the DC cable. So, estimate power loss in the DC cable using voltage uh, drop string cable. Again, positive and negative terminal. So, 2 times of the length of the cable in meter multiply with IMP STC of the string uh, from the string cable which is come from the PV module. Multiply with rho. Rho is the resistivity of the string cable. Again, copper 1 over 56. If aluminium, 1 over 34. Okay, you get it from here. So, divide with A string cable that you already calculate in this example. Okay. So, in this example, you already calculate the size of the string cable. So, size of the string cable square millimeter. So, to calculate the power loss, in the string cable so voltage drop from the string cable multiply with IMP STC from the BB module ok voltage drop array cables by using the same equation but you need to multiply with number of parallel string but please remember this is the length of the array cable and this is the size of the array cable so p loss array okay if you want to use uh, voltage drop string cable from this equation okay you need to multiply with imp stc and then multiply with np okay why you multiply with np because this is array but you using the equation for string so that's why you need to multiply with number of parallel string and the current for each parallel string but if you want to use this equation we drop a cable so p loss a cable equals to we drop a cable multiply with imp stc only okay no need to multiply with number of parallel string because in this equation you already multiply with we already consider the number of parallel string so where rho is the resistivity of the wire for copper the resistivity is 1 over 56 while aluminium is 1 over 34 so total power loss in DC cable so, make sure you total up the power loss in all string cable plus total power loss in all array cable. It is quite often to express power loss in term of percentage. So, in term of percentage equals to total power loss. Example, you plus all this string plus uh, array cable divide with 
V min MP multiply with IMP STC multiply with uh, number of PV module. Okay, NS by NP. Okay, this is number of PV module. Example 15, determine the total power loss in DC cable in example 14. So, remember that you have two strings, string number 1 and string number 2. You calculate one by one. So, you get the voltage drop for the string cable number 1, which is 1.14 volt. And for string number 2, voltage drop string cable 2 is 1.56. So, here you find the P loss string. Okay, P loss string using this equation. And the P loss array by using this equation. To get the voltage drop using this equation for string and this is for array. So this is the equation for the string cable. Now calculate for the array cable. So voltage drop of array cable is 0 0.76 and P loss of the array cable is 6.52 watt. So the total power loss in DC cable. So you need to total up string and array. So string 1 plus string 2 plus array. So you get the, uh, the total power loss in DC cable is 29.669 watt. And then calculate V min MP. Okay, V min MP. From example 7, you already learned how to calculate V min MP at cell temperature maximum, which is 70 degrees Celsius. And then I MP STC, this one from the data sheet of the PV module. This is number of uh, PV module in series per string and this is parallel string. So by using this equation to represent in percentage, you get 0.803%. So finally, step number 7, you draw the schematic diagram. You need to end up the design process with a complete schematic diagram. So this one you need to example uh, to refer to the guideline in Malaysia standard. So how uh, this is how you draw the schematic diagram. Okay, step number uh, number five, system prediction. In general, the power loss and grid connected PV system are due to seven factor. Factor number one is the inverter. In example, the maximum efficiency of an inverter is approximately 98%. Number two, cable. In example, maximum allowable voltage drop as stated in Malaysia standard 1837. Standard for PV array to inverter is 5%. But now for the latest one is 3%. Temperature, temperature direct power by, this is temperature factor, KTEM equals to 1 plus percentage gamma PNP over 100, T minus 25 degrees Celsius. Module mismatch or manufacturer power tolerance, dirt, solar friction and aging. So all these seven factor must be included when you calculate the power generated from the GCPV system. So P predict unit watt equals to P array STC multiply with all these seven losses. Efficiency of the inverter, uh, voltage drop in the cable, temperature factor, uh, this is KTEM power, uh, mismatch factor, dirt factor, this is solar friction and this is the aging factor. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, this is the 7 losses. So, the daily energy generated from the GCPV system can be predicted. P array STC multiply same losses except for this one. Except it don't have the solar friction. So, it replaced with the peak sun hour daily because this is the energy daily we calculate in the watt hour so peak sun hour daily the unit in hour if you want to calculate energy required annually so peak sun hour is annually if energy system you want to calculate for uh, monthly 
So, fixed hour should be monthly. So, let's say example 16, predict the average month energy of the system in example 10 during the first year. Use the following design parameter. So, average maximum ambient temperature 35 degrees Celsius. The directing factor 0 0.97. Fixed sun hour per annum 1715.5 hour. So, the solution. Okay, all the information is already given. So here, this is the efficiency of the inverter. You need to refer to the inverter data sheet. So let's check for the Sunny Boy. So Sunny Boy 5000 TL. So the maximum efficiency is 97%. So that's why it, uh, it's 0.97. So P Sun Hour annually. So, given 1715.5, so to calculate peak sun hour monthly, 1715.5, you divide with 12 month, so you get 142.958. So, this is the new system. So, uh, for the first year, so KH equals to 1, which is 1% for the first year. Let's say the... The age of the system is already uh, 7 years. So, KH will become 0 0.93. Okay, minus 7%. So, every 1 year, 1% losses. So, energy system monthly by using this equation but Remember, for monthly, peaks and hour should be in monthly. Okay, uh, so don't forget all these six losses. Okay, so monthly energy from the system is five two four three three nine point nine seven watt hour. So how to know this uh, this system is good? So we need to calculate the performance of the system. So the performance in dice could be predicted using specific yield equals to energy system divided with P array STC. So this value indicate the amount of effective solar resources at that site. So energy system Okay, because we get it from the peak sun hour. So we need to know is it uh, this site have a, a good or effective resources. So energy system divided with the array STC. So in Malaysia, for a good system, specific yield should be greater than 1200 watt hour per watt peak per annum. Okay. So, if you calculate, you need to calculate in per annum. Example 7, determine the specific year or the system in example 16. So, this, uh, this one calculated uh, energy system monthly. This is the value. This, this is the PA STC. 5770 watt peak. Okay. So, this is array. This is not. Uh, PNP STC, this is array. So, this is including all the PV module. So, specific year equals to energy of the system divided with P array STC. So, energy system, if you calculate in uh, annually, eh? so annually 6292079.68 watt hour. And then you divide with P array STC. So you get the specific year annually 1319.094 watt hour per watt peak. So from this value, you know this is a very good system. Have a very good uh, solar resources. So this specific year greater than 1200 watt hour per watt peak per annum. 
performance ratio PR, PR equals to energy of the system over P array STC multiplied with H tilde. So this PR reflect the quality of the component used in the design. So in practice, for a good system, PR should be greater than 75%. So predict the PR of the system in example 16. So energy system monthly predict is 524.33 kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak. P array STC is 4.77 kilowatt peak. H tilde monthly 142.95 8 kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak. So this H still come from the peak sun hour here. Okay, peak sun hour here, but it represent by the uh, solar irradiation 142.948 kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak. Okay, so PR this is uh, equals to Energy of the system divided with P array STC multiplied with H tilts. So PR get 76.89%. So a good system, so PR should be greater than 75%. So this is the good system. Installation. The three possible structure to install the CPV system. Number one, building integrated structure. So the existing rooftop will be replaced with PV module. Retrofitted structure requires a special bracket to hold PV structure on rooftop. The PV module are sitting on the rooftop with certain gap to allow air ventilation. So number three, freestanding usually on a flat concrete roof or ground mounted. Handling PV module always follow recommendation from PV manufacturer. On handling the PV modules, do not step on the PV module. Hold the module at a specific position. Be careful when holding PV module while climbing the ladder. Cabling, use a proper conduit. Do not interchange DC cable with AC cable. Sitting of inverter, make sure enough air circulation. Always follow recommendation from the manufacturer. Install the inverter at appropriate height. The small display window on the inverter should be readable. So PV with energy meter. The PV energy meter should be very close to the existing energy meter. Point of connection for residential house. Entitled for FIT scheme. The connection is at the incoming of cut out fuse. However, for the NEM concept. Connection is at the distribution board. So test and commissioning. Every GCPV system need to be tested before handover to the owner. The testing process is called TNC, test and commissioning. Two type of TNC, which is pre-commissioning test, conducted by qualified chargemen or wiremen. It include physical inspection on the system, state, uh, testing on the VOC, IAC, etc. A reliability run test, which has, we have set acceptance test, performance ratio test and conducted by the qualified person witnessed by the SEDA representative and inverter test for power quality of inverter conducted by the qualified person. All the technical document regarding TNC are available in SEDA website. So that's all for chapter number 5. Thank you.